Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is what I promised in the beginning, that we are going to talk about all these biasing circuits, but then at the end we have to use this biasing for an amplifier. And then now we have to talk about how do I connect the signal source to this circuit? Because imagine that this is my biasing circuit, a resistor divider circuit, and I want to connect the signal source, this input voltage or input signal source, like the microphone voltage, microphone source. How do I connect this? Because if I connect this using simple wire, well, I want you guys to pause and think about what is the problem with doing this. But I hope you all have thought about it by now. Uh, if I do this, I know that the voltage here, if this V in is, let's say, a small sinusoidal with a peak to peak value of, let's say, one millivolts, well, that's going to be the voltage at the base. It's not going to be. Uh, let's say that I designed this bias circuit to have an 800 millivolts DC, and I want to have this one millivolt sinusoidal on top of that DC. But what really happens is that I have a voltage source directly connected to this node. And one thing I know about voltage sources is that they enforce the voltage at that node to be the voltage that is posted on that voltage source. So if I, here I'm saying that this is a one millivolt sinusoidal, then the base voltage is going to be one millivolt sinusoidal. It's not going to be 800 millivolts plus that 100, what that plus that one millivolt up and down, right? The only way that remember, if I wanted to add two voltage sources or add the DC and an AC source, I had to put them in series, right? So this was the 800 millivolts, and this was the one millivolt, for example, sine of omega t, some frequency, right? Yeah, that worked, but then why well, I didn't want to have this uh, this battery, so I started learning about biasing. But now I see that if I connect the signal source again to the base, I'm not going to have this 800 millivolts. I'm just going to have simply one millivolt going up and down if this is time and this is magnitude, the base voltage magnitude. It's not going to be something like this that I liked, a one millivolt on top of an 800 millivolts. So what do I do? How do I fix this? Well, the, the way to fix this is actually quite simple. It's done using something that we call it a decoupling capacitor. So I put a capacitor here, and I say that as long as this capacitor value is big, so I'm going to call this C big, I know that the C big is an open circuit in DC analysis. Why? Because impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C, remember? And then if omega, at the, what is omega? Omega is representing frequency. At DC, omega frequency is 0, therefore this is infinity. Great. So I have an infinite resistance, so it's an open circuit. So what, I, what my circuit sees at DC is just this part. It's not going to see any of this part. And then for C big for AC analysis, I can imagine that this 1 over J omega C, if omega is increased, and if C is large enough, that's why I call it big, right? If C is large enough and omega is big, 1 over j omega c quickly with when i increase omega to like let's say 1000 hertz or like i don't know 100 hertz 50 hertz uh, this is going to go to zero so it's going to be a short circuit so a short circuit for ac analysis an open circuit for dc analysis for so basically when i'm thinking about dc points so vb uh, the DC value of VB, the voltage at the base, is going to be set by the circuit uh, shown inside this red circle. As for the AC, or small signal analysis, my circuit is going to look like this. I'm going to have my V in. I'm going to have a short circuit instead of the capacitor. My R2 is to ground. My R1 is also to ground, because we're talking about small signal and the, and the voltage sources are all ground. 
and then I'm going to have the R pi of my transistor, and then GM V pi, this being the V pi. I have the R naught, and again, RC is going to be again to ground, and this is my V out, and this is my emitter to ground. Okay, so you can see that my signal is actually coming into my circuit, so this is the one millivolt sign signal, right? It's coming to the circuit and I can calculate the small signal gain. This is what we're gonna do in the next two weeks, amplifier kind of analysis. But from the DC point of view, I have this circuit. I have this good old circuit without, basically I isolate the effect of this voltage source at the DC. So I make sure that when I'm doing DC analysis and as far as the, uh, my circuit cares, the DC biasing point of the circuit is not affected by this voltage source, by this signal source. This is this is called capacitive coupling. So capacitive coupling. And using this capacitive coupling, I can make sure that I can actually have my signal source connected to the circuit without it affecting the biasing of my circuit. Okay, thank you.